Second Chronicles. There's so much in here that we won't get it all covered tonight anyway. So let, I'm going to skip about five sections of verses that I was going to do uh, that was going to leave, leave a foundation. And after we read verses that we read, um, I'll summarize it. And I may include some things that are not in the verses that I read, but that's going to be because I shortened it. Okay. But it's all good. All right, let's go to Second Chronicles. And let me see which one I want here. Okay, I do want to bring this out because um, Asa was um, Jehoshaphat's father. And when he was alive, he, Asa became the king in place of Abijah. And uh, Abijah was buried in the city of David. And it tells about it in Second Chronicles 14. And then, um, and then uh, the land under Asa's rule... And Asa was Abijah's son. So um, under his rule, there was peace for ten years. And Asa did that which was good and right in the sight of the Lord. Okay. So, <coughs> and it might be in the verses we're fixing to read. But Jehoshaphat, for the most part, did the same. So we have a, a grandfather who was a king and who did right in the sight of the Lord. And we have a father, the grandfather's son, of course, who was a king and inherited the same seat and uh, did right w in the sight of the Lord for the most part. And now we're talking about Jehoshaphat. The uh, first one's grandson, Asa's father, I mean Asa's son. Anyway, we're going to talk about Je Je <laughs> just Jehoshaphat. Anyway, we're in Chronicles. <laughs> I'm tongue-tied today. Sorry. Pray, pray for me. Um, my brain's going one way and my tongue and my body is going another way. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, it's a mix-up mess. But anyway, uh, God is good anyway, and he can help us learn something out of this, regardless of what's going on with me. And Second Chronicles, uh, we just discussed a little bit what was in uh, another part, portion. But we're going to go to chapter 17. And Dave, will you read chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, please? And Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken, but sought to the Lord God of his father and walked in his commandments and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand, and all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence. And he had riches and honor in abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to ben -Hale, and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to uh, 
Nathaniel and to Micaiah to teach in the seas of Judah. Okay, you want any, you want to make a comment or a summary over what you just read? <clears throat> no. Nope. Okay. Josie, would you read 8 through 15, please? Well, mine's all mixed up with 7, 8, and 9, though. So. <laughs> well, if, if they're mixed up, you can start with 7 if you want. Okay. In the third year of his reign, he began a nationwide religious education program. He sent, set out top government officials as teachers in all the cities of Judah. These men including, included Ben Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah, and Micaiah, I don't know. Yeah, that's close enough. I he mean, also used the Levites for the purpose, including Shem. Shim, Shimra, Shimramoth, is that <laughs> Shimana and Nathaniel, Zebediah, Ashel, <laughs> Samanamoth, <laughs> Jonathan, no, well, that's not Jonathan, but Jonathan, Adon, <laughs> who knows all these names? Anyway, a Tobadon. whole bunch of people with names hard that are and difficult the, for us to pronounce. <laughs> and also the priest, Gleshma and Jerome. <laughs> Jeremiah. They took copies of the book of the law of the Lord to all the cities of Judah to teach the scriptures to the people. How far did I go? To 15, okay. please. Then the fear of the Lord fell upon all the surrounding kingdoms so that none of them declared war on King Jehoshaphat. Even some of the Philistines uh, brought him presents and the annual tribute. And the Arabs donated 7,700 rams and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became very strong and built fortresses and supplied cities throughout Judah. His public works program was also extensive, and he had a huge army stationed at Jerusalem, his capital. 300,000 Judean troops were there under General Adiah. Next in command was Jehonah with an army of 280,000 men. That's it. Okay. A lot of names that are hard to discuss, and those that like to teach on the meaning of names can come back in another time and teach on each one of those names. I can't pronounce them any better than Josie did, so I'm not even going to try. But the main thing is, uh, there was quite a few of them. And Josie, did you want to make a summary of what um, you read besides trying to figure out how to pronounce all those names? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, he had plenty of people helping him, it looks like. He was blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was fat. <laughs> He was definitely blessed, um, and I think it had to do with his grandpa and his dad both serving the Lord and uh, being good kings and trying to do things right in the sight of God, and they passed that on to him, and, and he learned it, and he was doing the same, and when we do things God's way, we get blessed, don't we, and he was like, I mean, richer than rich. <laughs> I think he was probably up there with the billionaires, etc. cetera. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, I'm going to read uh, 15 through 19. And next to him was Jehoanan, commander, and with him 280,000. And next, oh, you, you already read 15. Um, and 16. And next to him, uh, Masia, the son of Zikri, See, I can't pronounce him either. Um, who volunteered for the Lord, and with him 200,000 courageous men. And of Benjamin, 
Elida, a brave man, and with him two thousand two hundred thousand men armed with bow and shield, and next to him was Jehozabad, and with him a hundred eighty thousand armed and ready for military service. These are the ones who were in the service of the king besides those he placed in fortified cities throughout Judah. No wonder the surrounding people were fearful of Jehoshaphat because even though he stood for what is right and what is good, he had a lot of people behind him, so you didn't dare cross him. Because <laughs> he, he could take care of you in a moment. <laughs> he had strong, strong backing. Very strong backing. All right. Um, all right. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 20 there's some chapters in between but we're not going to go to that much detail okay let's go to 20 there's it there's uh, several chapters in second chronicles it's about jehoshaphat and it's all interesting enough to study so that's your homework when you get home and when you're bored go find Jehoshaphat in Second Chronicles and study him. He's mentioned um, there's two two of them, so there's some of the stories in Second Chronicles and some are in Second Kings and some are in Second Samuel and some are in First Chronicles. But um, it would be well worth to make note of which one is which, so you don't get confused. But anyway, we're gonna st we're gonna study this one whose father was Asa. And in chapter 20, it tells some more about him. It also told more about him in chapter 18 and 19, but we're going to go to 20. And let's start, let's see, how long is this one? Yeah, I'm glad I skipped those others because this one's pretty long. All right. Um, Dave, will you read verses 1 through 13, please? It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other besides the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria, and behold, they be in Hezazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. Um, and Jehovah, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to seek help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Ju Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heaven uh, uh, of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for, the, for thy name, saying, If when evil come, cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. We stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, 
but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have not might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, Zach, the son of Benaniah, ben, ben, the son of Jeel, the son of Methaniah, <laughs> A Levite of the sons of Asaph came to came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. You can stop there. Isn't that awesome? I got a lot out of those verses. Dave, do you want to tell what you got out of them before I open my big mouth? Any further? <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. I find it interesting. Do you remember the thousands of men he has serving and fighting for him? 300,000 here, 280,000, and so on and so forth. But yet, this other group comes along, which is a group that they did not fight earlier. Um, they let them be. How dare they pay that time of mercy back by coming back after Jehoshaphat's army? Um, I think that's amazing. I also find it amazing that here he is, as big as he is, and he's still humbling himself before the Lord and recognizing that to win the war, no matter how big his army is, he's got to have God on his side. He's got to have God on his side. And if he doesn't have God on his side, that army can destroy his army. And he's recognized this. And uh, so he's gathered everybody together to pray. And their families, not just the soldiers. Their families are out there praying with them. That God, God would lead the way, guide the way, would show the way, and would give them victory because it's God's battle, not theirs. <coughs> now, that's a whole different mindset, a whole different way to look at it. Isn't that exciting? I don't know about you, but that's kind of exciting to me. Because usually somebody who's that big and that important and has that many people following them and that rich, they're, they're proud and haughty and all about themselves and they want to take the credit for, the whole, for everything the good, good that happens. It doesn't sound that way here. It sounds like Jehoshaphat gives God the glory and gives him the honor and tries to do his best to do right by all the people that's under him. Um, but he's recognizing, if not for God, things wouldn't be so great. Now, that's kind of attitude and mindset he wants all of us to have, no matter how well we're doing or how well we're not doing. He wants to have the glory. And when we humble ourselves and we don't say, well, we're winning because I did this and I did that, you know, he doesn't like that. He likes it when we depend upon him, no matter how well it looks for us. We're still showing honor to God that he's the one in control. Because he's been known to let the smaller army many times win the battles. So it's, it's very evident in the Bible that God's will is going to be done. It's not going to be a matter of numbers. All right. Josie, would you start with verse 16 or wherever it's a good place to start right around there? <laughs> okay. 
Tomorrow go down and attack them. You will find them coming up the slopes of Zizza. At the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeril, Jeril, but you will not need to fight. Take your places, stand quietly, and see the incredible rescue operation God will perform for you. O people of Judah and Jerusalem, don't be afraid of discourage or discourage. Go out there tomorrow, for the Lord is with you. Then King Jehoshaphat fell to the ground with his face to the earth, and all the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem did the same. Uh, yeah, you can continue reading until Worst, um, about, I'm thinking, maybe 23. We'll see. Okay. Worshiping the Lord. Then the <coughs> Levites of the Goah clan and the Gora clan stood to praise the Lord God of Israel with songs of praise that rang out strong and clear. Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way, Jehoshaphat stopped and called them to attention. Listen to me, O people of Judah and Jerusalem, he said. Believing in the Lord your God, and you shall have success. Believe his prophets, and everything will be all right. After consultation with the leaders of people, he determined that there should be a choir leading the march. Clothed in sanctified garments and singing the song, His loving kindness is forever. As they walked along praising and thanking the Lord, and at the moment they began to sing and to praise the Lord, caused, caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir to begin fighting among them themselves, and they destroyed each other. For the Amorites and Moabites turned against their allies, from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. And when they had finished that job, they turned against each other. Okay. Let's stop right there. I don't know about you, but that excites me. Jehoshaphat's large army didn't have to raise a hand against anybody. Jehoshaphat had declared it was God's battle, and God fought it for him. Jehoshaphat had them singing and shouting praises to God. There's power in praising God, and God took care of it. He got the opposing armies to get confused, and they killed each other. Isn't that amazing? All those men killed who were not serving God, who were not pleasing God, who were not doing stuff for the Lord, and the armies that were trying to do things God's way and were trusting in God and doing, I mean, what army have you, other than in scriptures, have you heard of in our lifetime that has gone out praising and singing and uh, so forth, uh, praises to the Lord instead of shooting? the opposing army. But they won the battle. Isn't that amazing? And that, that, I mean, if you stop and think how many soldiers he it listed that he had, even if in a previous battle he had lost them, there was still more than plenty. That had to be a really loud praise with that many people praising the Lord, singing praises to the Lord. And God won the victory for them. Isn't that awesome? Which tells me if he can do it then, he can do it now. We have so many battles nowadays to fight. But if we will start praising the Lord more and trusting the Lord more, yes, he may still require us to do some fighting and to stand up against the bullies. But as we praise the Lord and as we give him the credit and him the glory and him the honor, we will, when it's all said and done, when the, when the smoke clears, so to speak, as the saying goes, we will have won the victory because it is God's battle. Isn't that exciting? I think it is. Anyway, 
Okay, I'm going to start reading in verse 24. Turn to my page too quick. Forgot to read the first of that verse. When the men of Judah came to the lookout tower of the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies lying on the ground, and no one had escaped. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take their spoil, they found much among them, including equipment, garments, and valuable things which they took for themselves, more than they could carry away, so much that they spent three days gathering the spoil. I mean, this is a large army, and it took this large army three days to collect all the stuff that was left over after these men killed each other. Then, in verse 26, on the fourth day they assembled in the valley of Berakah, for it was there that they blessed the Lord. For that reason they named the place the valley of Berakah, which Berakah, well I'm not saying it right I'm sure, means blessing, until today. <clears throat> then they returned to Jerusalem with joy, every man of Judah, every man of Judah. And Jerusalem led by Jehoshaphat for the Lord had made them rejoice over their enemies can you imagine the joy their families felt when they saw that all of their men were coming back there wasn't even one that was killed that's amazing who goes to war and nobody gets killed that's amazing only God can do that Verse 28, they came to Jerusalem with harps and lyres and <coughs> trumpets to the house, the temple of the Lord. And the fear of God came upon all of them, all of the kingdoms of those countries, when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. <clears throat> if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? Right? Okay. So the kingdom of Jehoshaphat was quiet. For his God gave him rest on all sides. Talk about sweet peace. <laughs> now Jehoshaphat. Let's see how far is it. Okay, I'm almost in there. Now Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was 35 years old when he became king. And he reigned in Jerusalem for 25 years. So when he was no longer reigning, he was 10... 60 years old he stopped being the king at 60 so that's amazing that's amazing all of my kids I think are older than this man was when he started reigning <clears throat> that's amazing <laughs> his mother's name was Azuba the daughter of Shilhai he walked in the way of his father Asa and did not depart from it, doing what was right in the sight of the Lord. There's the key. There's the key. Doing what is right in the sight of the Lord, giving God the glory, praising God, being humble in the sight of the Lord, and trusting God and obeying him. You know that song, Trust and Obey. Only the high places for pagan sacrifices were not removed. Uh-oh. Jehoshaphat did a lot of things that were right in the sight of the Lord, but <clears throat> he didn't remove all of the pagan stuff that they, the pagans at the beginning of his reign had there. <clears throat> for the people had not yet set their hearts firmly on the God of their fathers. So... The people weren't totally committed to God, but they obeyed Jehoshaphat. And that's why they were blessed like they were, and they praised God. Uh, but um, Jehoshaphat, I believe that was a mistake. He should have gotten rid of those, in spite of the fact that some of them might have still been 
not persuaded towards God. But okay. Um, Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat from the first to the last, behold, they are written in the records of Jehu, the son of Hanani, which are recorded in the book of the kings of Israel. After all this, Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, made an alliance with Ahaziah, Ahaziah <laughs> king of Israel, and he acted wickedly in doing so. We have to be careful about we choose for friends he joined him in building ships to go to Tarshish for trade and they built them in Ezion Geber then Eliezer the son of Dodavahu of Merishah prophesied against Jehoshaphat saying because you have allied yourself with Ahaziah the Lord has broken down what you have built so the ships were wrecked and were unable to go to Tarshish. Okay. When he was doing things God's way, he was blessed. When he make a, made an allowance or an alliance with someone who was not doing things God's way, he was not blessed. So he was a good king, but he was not a perfect king. He still had some things he didn't do correctly. And we just read about that. All right. Um, okay. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 21. And start with verse 1. And Dave, I think we're just going to go from verse 1 to verse 6. And then we're... No, let's go to 7. Okay, 1 through 7. And then we're going to call it good for the night. Um. Now, Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, reigned in his stead. And he had brethren, the sons of Jehoshaphat, as Zariah and Jehiel and Zechariah and Azariah and Michael and Sh Shephatiah all these were the sons of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. And their father gave them great gifts of silver and of gold and of precious things with fenced cities in Judah. But the kingdom gave he to Jehoram because he was the firstborn. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father. He strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with a sword and divers also of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was thirty and two years old, I mean, <laughs> thirty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife, and he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he made, had made with David, and as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. Okay. So Jehoshaphat's son became the new, his oldest son became the new king when Jehoshaphat died. But 
he didn't learn to do things the right way in the sight of the Lord. And that plus Jehoshaphat, even though we didn't read all the verses that told about it, he became friends with two different uh, kings of Israel that were very bad kings and um, did not do things according to the way uh, what was right in God's sight. And Ahab was one of them. Um, and then we mentioned the other one, which forget what his name was, but it started with an A also. But, you know, when you choose the wrong friends, it causes you to compromise on some of your things that you're doing. And um, you you got to be careful about who you choose to hang with. Anyway, uh, he ca- he was, his son killed all the rest of his sons and did that which was evil in the sight of God. And um, he God did let him reign for a while, but not for very long. And he didn't destroy the the descendant all the descendants of David because of the promises he had made to David. But anyway, um, if we want to know more about the story, we have to get in there and, and read it. But I'm going to tell you the things that I got out of this, and I don't know as I have them completely in order. I, I know he had prophets that warned him against being befriending these two men that were evil kings of Israel. Uh, and he didn't heed that advice that was given to him. And so uh, when he died, his oldest son was evil and destroyed the other sons and was not a good king. Um, Okay, I already covered that. Jehoshaphat, even though he wasn't a perfect king, was still considered a good king. Um, uh, The two bad friends were Ahab and Ahaziah. Ahaziah. Anyway, um, they were evil kings of Israel, and he befriended them and joined alliances with them, and that's when his blessings started being removed from him. Um, But up until he made the alliances with these two bad kings, all the other nations around him feared him because God blessed him. So, in a roundabout way, they were afraid of the God he served. Um, and because there was, he obeyed God in many, many ways, but he didn't remove all of the pagan idols. See, he should have removed all of them. When we obey the Lord and we obey him partially, that's not complete obedience. And God is not pleased with that. And he cannot bless us unless we completely obey him in everything he tells us to do. So uh, that story is a warning to us. We want God's blessings. We might not be blessed the same way Jehoshaphat was. But if we want God's blessings, we need to do uh, what God tells us to do. Because what he tells us to do is what's the best way to go. It's the best to do for everybody. Um. It's amazing to me that um, his grandfather and his father and Jehoshaphat himself, for the most part, served the, served the Lord and did things w- that were right in the sight of the God, and they were blessed. And then came the time when he wasn't completely serving God the way he sh- and he wasn't completely doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and God was not able to bless him when he was doing that and so things turned the other direction Um. so I guess the key lesson 
that we can take from this is trust God and obey God. Do that which is right in his sight. And we will be blessed. And he's Jehoshaphat was a true example of trust and obey and you're blessed and disobey. And even though you may still give praise to the Lord, you won't be as blessed as you would have been. But he did get to enjoy those blessings while he was doing things the right way. Any other comments?